Hi everybody, so today we're going to be talking about the organ of corti, which is this structure right here. I've already done a video on the external ear and the middle ear, as well as the cochlea. And like I said, this, this video we're going to concentrate more on the organ of corti. So before we get started, let's just reorient ourselves on some, uh, some of the different parts of the organ of corti. Remember, you're looking at a cross section of a long tube. So this is the scala vestibuli up here. And this is going to contain a fluid called perilymph. This structure that's right here, this line, is going to be a membrane called the vestibular membrane. Okay, so here's my vestibular membrane. This whole thing right here. And then we're going to have this middle section that's right in here. Okay, this middle section is going to be known as the scala media. I actually prefer the name the cochlear duct, and I'll probably use these interchangeably, but it's also known as the cochlear duct. Now, the cochlear duct actually contains a fluid called endolymph. So the difference between endolymph and paralymph is paralymph has more sodium than potassium, endolymph has more potassium than sodium. Down here, we have another tube, and this is going to be called the scala tympani. Okay, that's the scale of Tiffany there. And this is also going to contain perilymph. Now, the scale of Tiffany and the scale of vestibuli, they actually meet inside the cochlea at the helicotrema. Now for the organ of corti. Well, the first thing is you notice we have this big pink structure. This is a gel-like structure. This is going to be called the tectorial membrane. Okay, so that's my tectorial membrane. And then you'll notice down here in the scale of tympani, that's going to be separate the cochlear duct from the scale of tympani. It's going to be this membrane that's going this way. This is going to be called the basilar membrane. Okay, so that's my basilar membrane right there. Okay, this whole long blue thing, okay, because this is a different structure right there. In fact, let's talk about this. So this structure right here is going to be called these blue lines here are going to be called the pillars of corti, and the center part is going to be known as the organ of corti. If you notice, we have these squares here, which would have nuclei in them if I had drawn them right. Those are going to be supporting cells. Now, you have supporting cells through this whole thing. I just didn't draw them because that's a lot of drawn, and I just didn't feel like doing it. So, just so you know, you have supporting cells all through there. They're actually called diodor cells. If you also notice on this side of this tunnel of corti, we have hair cells. So these are going to be hair cells, and that's to going towards the outside of the head that way. So we call these outer hair cells. Okay, so those are my outer hair cells, and the outer hair cells are going to modify sound. And we'll talk more about what they do in just a few minutes, okay? So they're going to modify sound. Now, if you also notice on the outer hair cells, by the way, before I go into that, you actually have about 12,000 outer hair cells. I'm only showing three because, again, this is just a cross-section. You're actually looking down at a tube. So you have three rows of these, and one after the next, after the next, after the next. You have about 12,000 of them in your organ of corti, okay? If you notice, and really quick, so this is the inner hair cell. I might as well just do this now too. This is my inner hair cell. Okay. And you're going to have about 3,500 of these. Okay. So you see you have a lot more outer hair cells than inner hair cells. And the inner hair cells do about 95% of sound or 95% of your hearing is going to come from this inner hair cell. All right. So if you notice, we actually have the actual hairs of our hair cell, and it's these parts that are sticking up here and here, okay? And these are gonna be called stereocilia. Now, stereocilia is actually one word. I just wrote it as two words, simply because of the fact that I didn't have room. The outer hair stereocilia actually projects up into the tectorial membrane. The inner hair cell, I've seen some books that say it kind of makes it, it touches it, but it's not that firm. I've seen some that say there's little dimples, like Guyton will say there's little dimples. So I just drew little dimples here just to show where that's at. This is gonna be a stereocilia of the inner hair cell. And you can see it doesn't make as good a connection with the tectorial membrane as the outer hair cells. One other structure that we're concerned about is this other blue membrane that's gonna go this way. 
this, this membrane has to go on like this, and this is going to be called the reticular lamina. Okay, so that's my reticular lamina. So, here's what's going to happen when you go to here, is when sound comes in, remember, the scale of vestibuli is connected to the oval window. So I have my oval window, right? I'm gonna have sound come through and my oval window is gonna go in and out. As the oval window goes in and out, it makes waves in that perilin, right? It's gonna be, we can make waves in the perilin. The waves in the perilin are going to cause waves in this vestibular membrane. As this vestibular membrane makes waves, it's going to cause the endolymph to make waves. When the endolymph makes waves, two things are going to happen. The first thing that's gonna happen is this basilar membrane is also going to go up and down with the waves, okay? And as the vestibular, that's the first thing. The second thing that's gonna happen is as the vestibular membrane goes up and down, well, before, let's go back real quick. This is going to go up and down. As it goes up and down, it's going to cause the stereocilia to bend, but there's more to it than that, okay? So, and this will actually go up and hit the tectorial membrane and bend. But the other thing that's gonna happen is as this goes up, this whole structure comes in a little bit. So when the wave has this going up, this whole structure is gonna come in, and then endolymph's also going to come in and push the stereocilia. Okay, so this goes up and in, endolymph comes up and in, and it's going to push the stereocilia. And as it does that, it causes a shearing of the stereocilia against the tectorial membrane. So as it comes in, this is gonna be a shearing. When it goes down, the endolymph's also gonna start heading out and it's gonna cause shearing also as it goes out. The fact that this gets shearing both ways plays a role in how you hear, okay? So this is gonna go up and down, endolymph's gonna come in and out. I'm sorry, it's gonna go up and down as it does. This comes in when it goes up, it goes, when it goes down, this structure kind of shifts outward, okay? And that's gonna create the shearing of the stereocilia. So let's take a look at these um, hair cells real quick and what happens. So if I go over here and one other thing I want to point out real quick is that as I move away from the inside of the head, the stereocilia actually gets taller. So I should have actually drawn this like this. The stereocilia actually gets taller as we move away from the inside of the head. Okay. So this is looking at a hair cell right here. This is going to be an inner hair cell. And this really tall one is going to be called kinocilium. Okay, that's kinocilium right there. And then this is my stereocilia here. These ones here are my stereocilia. And on my stereocilia, we actually have proteins that go and connect the top of these. Now I'm making it look like there's only about what? One, two, three, four, five of these, like it's a foot. You actually have a whole bunch of these on every single one. It actually makes like a V-shape, but again, we're just looking at a cross section. So here's what's going to happen. Is as the stereocilia go towards the kinocilium, when it goes towards the kinocilium, what's gonna happen, oh wait, one more thing. These are called tip links. These proteins that are connecting this, this these are called tip links. So, as these go closer, what's going to happen is these tip links are going to pull open channels on the stereocilia, okay? Imagine it like this. Imagine you're in an attic and the way to get out, the floors, the door's on the floor, right? And then you got to go down some stairs, but you got to pull the door up and out, right? To go down. And they have a rope. So imagine you pull that rope and the door opens up, right? And now you can go down the stairs. That's kind of the same thing here. As these pull, they pull and it creates an opening. When that opening occurs, remember endolymph has a lot of potassium. So what's gonna happen is my potassium is going to start to rush in to the inner hair cell. So here's my potassium here, right? And then basically what happens is this is going to depolarize. Right? There's going to be depolarization, right? Because the potassium is coming in. At the same time the potassium is coming in, I am going to have calcium coming in also with this. Okay, so I'm also going to have calcium in here. Now, inside of the hair cell, you have 
something called a vesicle. And vesicles are going to contain something called neurotransmitters. So here's my neurotransmitters, right? And these neurotransmitters are going to be glutamate. So here's my glutamate. What the calcium does is there's proteins on the vesicle and there's proteins on the membrane. And so what it does is the calcium helps bond those two proteins together. So that way, my vesicle can now bond with the cell membrane. And when it does, it can release these neurotransmitters. So now the glutamate is going to come out, right? You have a nerve down here nerve ending and what's going to do is when that happens we're going to get an action potential right we get action potentials and that's going to send the signal to the brain so this goes to the brain and that's what's going to happen on the inner hair cell okay oh but there's more so let's say it's the opposite now let's say these move away right so now they're moving away from the kinocilium well when they move away from the kinocilium Right? These gates close, so the calcium stops rushing in. We're going to get hyperpolarization. Right? And then we're going to stop having this, these signals sent to the brain. Okay? So technically, you have signals sent to the brain all the time. Right? These are constantly sending signals to the brain. When this bends forward, the, the amount of signals increases. So the brain is going to interpret that as hearing a sound or something, right? When they go backwards, the amount of impulses are going to decrease in comparison to what it normally is, and the brain's going to also interpret that another way. So that's going to be the way that you hear. Okay, let's look at these outer hair cells now. The outer hair cells are going to be kind of identical. They're going to have the tip links. Don't forget, they do do some hearing, right? They do about 5% of hearing. So, but they're going to play another role. Like we said, they're going to modify sound. Right? So, in this case, what's going to happen is in the brain stem, you have something called the ovalocochlear bundle. Okay? And let me have to draw this down like this. Okay, and then I'm going to have my nerve down here, right? Um, and this is what's going to happen. Let's say that it's real quiet and you hear a loud noise, right? Let's say you put your headphones on, you turn on your phone, it's really loud and it blares. You hop in your car, you turn the key and the stereo's real loud and it blares. The brain is gonna do a few things to automatically shut down that sound to protect your ear organs, right? First thing it's gonna do is it's gonna cause the stapedius muscle and the tensor tympani muscle in the middle ear to contract so it stops the ossicles from moving or it slows them down. Right? So you're not going to get as much vibration on that oval window. And when you don't have as much vibration on the oval window, you don't have as many waves or as strong as waves in the, vestibular, uh, in the scale of vestibuli, which is going to stop the paralymph from making too many waves, right? So that's one thing it's going to do. Those are going to contract. But the other thing that's going to happen here is the ovular cochlear bundle is going to send a signal out to the outer hair cell. So again, we're talking about outer hair cells now. And what's going to happen is you have something called acetylcholine, right? So on the acetylcholine, what's going to happen is it is going to go into the cell, ACH, right? And when it does that, it's going to cause my potassium to leave, and this is going to hyperpolarize once again, okay? So that's one thing that's going to happen. Because remember, if we hyperpolarize, we're not sending as many signals to the brain. But the other thing that can happen on here too, is you actually have some um, proteins on here, contractile proteins. And what these contractile proteins will do is if there's a real loud noise, these will relax, right? Oh, by the way, these, these proteins are called Preston proteins. So if it's a real loud noise, these relax. When these relax, these inner hair cells will actually stretch out and push that basal membrane down and it makes, and the reticular membrane goes down, right? Or the reticular lamina goes down. 
And then it makes it harder for the hair cells to bend because it's been stretched out and that basal membrane's gone down. It's actually called a downward bowen, but because this is down, it makes it harder for those hair cells that are in the tectorial membrane to, 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 to move, okay? So that's if it's loud. On the opposite side, Let's say you're trying to hear something. You're in like a restaurant and there's a lot of noise and you're trying to hear for your, sat, your name being called so you can go to your table or, um, you know, I, there's, maybe you missed something on a movie and you're trying to hear what somebody said and you keep playing it over and over. Well, what these will do in that case is these will contract. When they contract, it's the opposite. This will actually shorten. The outer membrane will actually shorten because these proteins contract. And because they shorten, it actually makes it easier for, your, for, your, for you to be able to pick up sound, right? And to distinguish sound and block out other sounds. So um, that's what the outer membranes do. So again, they're gonna modify sound. So really quick, on the organ of corti, I'm gonna go back over here. We're gonna get all the vibration, right? We're gonna get the basal membrane coming up. As it comes up, it's gonna move this way. It's gonna cause shearing going this way, right? And then we're going to have the endolymph coming in. And then when it goes down, we're going to have shearing going out that way. These are going to shear against the tectorial membrane and send a signal to the brain. And, and therefore, you're going to be able to hear what it is. One other thing is, if you notice, I have these nerves coming here. These are going to go on to become the cochlear nerves. And then the cochlear nerves are actually going to meet up with the vestibular nerve that comes from the vestibular apparatus. And then you're going to have the vestibular cochlear nerve or cranial nerve number eight. So... That's basically it for the organ of corti. If you like the video, please hit the like and subscribe button. And thank you so much for watching.